Hi, my name is Arthur Gonzalez, and I'm one of four artists that are in a show here at the Aperson uh, Gallery, and it's called Into the Woods. And uh, I really like this theme, and I always like shows that have actually a, a theme instead of just, you know, we all use clay or something like that, which is, you know, not as very interesting. And I really like being part of this show because uh, this is something that's actually some, uh, a theme that's very important to me, which is my relationship to uh, basically wood itself, but also the woods, and also tree stumps, and also the fact that I'm a ceramic artist, but often what happens is that my love of wood and lumber uh, becomes part of my work as well. So I often marry um, literally two pieces together that are existing together on the same piece, wood and clay, and how they speak to each other. Um, so the piece that, I'm ha that I have in this show itself is, uh, it, it goes from the 1990s to the present. Uh, there's a theme that I uh, had in the early two 2000s, which was a theme that was called the cadence of stupidity. And that theme was about the, uh, me reading the original story of Pinocchio, which was a story made by Carlo Collodi, who was the writer of children's story in Italy, and who actually got famous for Pinocchio in his very own lifetime. It was, it was, his, it was his blockbuster back then. So the thing is, is that the story of Pinocchio is also very dark and also even sexual, and, and at times, uh, 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 unnecessarily violent, which is kind of interesting because it is a children's story, but people had a different idea of, of what children were that back then, anyways, as well. So, anyways, what I'm great, what, what, the one piece I made that's probably the oldest piece in the show is called the Atmosphere Machine. And basically, it's a figure that is hanging on the wall, these are all wall pieces, and in the background is a, uh, is a wood painting that has a painting of a clear-cut forest. So Pinocchio is in front of that. And, uh, and it's called the Atmosphere Machine because it's more of a study about um, composition and space between the foreground and the background. When you're making work that is on the wall, my whole uh, ambition is to create interesting space because it's not like sculpture that you can walk around uh, it has lots of oxygen, so to speak. There's, there's limit, limited oxygen you know, on the wall because you can't get further than the wall itself. So that's the task at hand, and, uh, and I really enjoy that. I've been doing that for many years, and it's kind of like my life um, focus. The other, another piece is completely opposite in terms of this is actually a painting. Uh, I was raised as a painter, and so I still do painting and drawing at the same time. There's this one piece that is called Woman Holding Tree Slice as Mirror. And in this painting, there is this old person who is looking at a tree slice and using it as if she's looking into the mirror. And uh, the title is right above her head, but it's it, the title is there, so it looks as, at first look, it looks like it says Man Holding Tree Slice as Mirror. And then if you look closer, you can see the W-O, and it's, oh, it's woman. And the thing is, is that it's more of age kind of concept in that, in that as you get older, you begin to just be an old man and an old woman, and then people just look at you as just being old. And, uh, and so I actually made this piece literally 20 years ago, and now I'm beginning to feel it <laughs> in terms of you know, going into that, that, that world of, of being in my mid-60s and seeing how uh, people relate to it. So these are kind of things too where it's like what makes work more important and how do you make work that is poignant and how do you make work that is um, profound and I think that it's not my ambition to do that at all but I, it is more important for me to just um, make comments that are more of a slice of life or questions that I have for the day and that kind of thing and I realize that if you speak to that that uh, other people will relate to it by saying, ah, oh, yeah, I think the same way that you do. Yeah, I always think that same thing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden there's a connection. So it's not that I'm being pedantic by giving everybody the answers to the universe, which is 
ridiculous to begin with, but that I am um, raising uh, questions that are mutual. And in that way, it's, it, it opens it up for, for read. And I want my work to be read. I don't want it to come off um, aggressively. I want it to be like, literally like a book, as this is. So this is some, another device that I use. And what, I, what this is is simply, it's clay, but it looks like a book. If you start out a piece, a blank with a book, it's a device that's, that the viewer sees as, read me. This is a, something that I need to look. And you know, if you're a Western uh, uh, person where you learn how to read from left to right, you will read left to right. You'll say, this is first and this is second. Another culture might say, this is the first part you'll read and go this way. So it's interesting to me that just because of this format, it kind of already has an assumption. Read me. So the thing is, is that you can put anything in this device, anything, be abstracted, it can actually be meaningless, and people will want to read it and understand it because of our training when we look at something like this. These pieces have, honestly, they're like collage. And this piece here has a little figure, and she's holding her tongue. And the piece is called How to Hold Your Tongue. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an expression that I'm taking literally. So they're fun. So a lot of these things are, are kind of flippant and, uh, and then in relationship to another kind of image over here, then they could be contradictory. Something funny, something not so funny. And then what you have is the viewer mentally um, seeing the dualism in that and, and trying to come to terms with it. And uh, there's an assumption that one precludes the other, which is definitely not you know, necessarily the case. It could be just be a, a diptych where you're seeing this and that and they're together and, and you're forced to understand what the balance is, how they're the same, how they're not. So I really love this kind of a thing where I'm talking about um, what happens when you look at something and what happens if it's contradictory. You know, it's kind of like understanding an idea of like a Magritian, like Rene Magritte, who said, had a picture of a, of a pipe and said, this is not a pipe. It's like, well, which do I believe? Do I believe the picture? Do they leave a sentence? Which one is the real thing? And then, of course, Renee says after that, no, they're, they're, one's, a, one's paint and one's, one's text, and they're both not real. You know, <laughs> you know it's like, duh. <laughs> you know, the answer is duh. And, and, and to say that, you know, it brings a more awareness of what you're looking at in a way that we tend to think. I love work that says that when you're looking at something and you're catching yourself, you can say, oh, isn't it funny how I tend to think that way? Isn't it funny how I thought that? You know, because then all of a sudden it reflects back to you and not, and not, um, not an objective distancing where you're just judging and critiquing, you know. All of a sudden it's coming back to you and you're seeing your nature, which I love doing that. Um, so the rest of the pieces in the show are also books with the exception of this one larger piece it's called the failure of the well, and it, and it's more uh, in line with um, later work where there there are figures, full figures that are actually, um, in es in essence, coming out from the wall or sitting on a device. In this case, it's a figure that's sitting on a log, and uh, and she's kind of like, hmm, you know, kind of pouting, and it's actually. It's actually after a, uh, a Gauguin painting of, um, these, the, of this person who had that kind of expression. So it's actually just lifted right off of a character from a, my, one of my favorite Gauguin paintings. Um, on her dress is a painting of a well. And, uh, and again, what I'm trying to do here on a visual device level is to show the difference between 2D and 3D and how they merge together. So by putting a figure that's doing the, which is copying the, uh, the job of a painting, and then she's also wearing another painting on her dress of a well, and then what happens is the painting on the dress is now subservient to the sculpture because it's on the sculpture. And the image of the well is also a fig uh, uh, image that has this implication of a hole 
and so we have to understand that the painting itself is a place where space, more space is. So all this stuff is divisive and, and it's not really conscious. Uh, I mean, people do come to me and actually say, hey, I get it. Some people that jive with me on the same level and share that with me shows me that I do have um, an audience that really understands my language and, uh, and understands when they look at the work how to mm, take it, how to, that they know that they're going to see something that is multifaceted and that if they look long enough that they'll see these levels and these layers. And of course it's, it's the natural way that I tend to think but also it's a, another kind of procedure that enables the work itself to be uh, dwelled on longer. And although that they work often seems to be narrative, like what's the story here, what's the story there, they are actually more of um, characters that we don't know the story. And as a consequence, those become more about um, metaphors and symbols. Um, and then the viewer will often fill in the spaces with their own narrative, which I really love that too. Okay. So that's basically what I've uh, come to share today. And, uh, and I'm really happy to be part of the show. And uh, there's one more week uh, as, as this recording is happening. And so please come by the Epperson Gallery and see other three artists. Thank you.